to find a linear transformation, t, from r4 to r3, such that we have this beautiful mapping. Now, our job is to find the standard matrix of this linear transformation, t, and then to find a vector x such that the image of vector x under the action of t equals the vector 1 to negative 1 if it exists. So here we go, part A. We want to find the standard matrix of t. So we're looking for, we want to find A, our standard matrix of t, such that the image of vector x under the action of t is equal to matrix A times vector x. So we need to take this given linear transformation and just start by decomposing it. So I'm going to rewrite this given linear transformation. We have that this vector x is being mapped to this transformation t, and I'm going to rewrite this in a equivalent matrix form. So we have the first equation is our first row. So this is x sub 1 plus x sub 2 minus x sub 3 plus x sub 4. Beautiful. The second equation is the second row. So that's going to be 2x sub 1 plus x sub 2 plus 4x sub 3 plus x sub 4. And last but not least, this third equation is the third row. So we have 3x sub 1 plus x sub 2 plus 9x sub 3. So these two forms are equivalent. But I like this second form here because it really allows us to see the column vectors. So let's really take our time here and decompose this. We can see these column vectors. So let's start by rewriting this as a linear combination. So we have that vector x is being mapped to, we have our weight x sub 1 multiplied by the column vector 1, 2, 3, plus our weight x sub 2 multiplied by the column vector 1, 1, 1, plus x sub 3, our weight x sub 3 multiplied by the column vector negative 1, 4, 9, plus that last weight, x sub 4, multiplied by the column vector, 1, 1, 0. And we know by our equivalence theorem that this linear combination is equivalent to the matrix equation whose column vectors are 1, 2, 3, 1, 1, 1, negative 1, 4, 9, 1, 1, 0, so there's the matrix multiplied by the vector in R4. So we have the vector with the entries x sub 1, x sub 2, x sub 3, x sub 4, which is exactly what we wanted. Woohoo! This is equal to a matrix A multiplied by vector x. And so we can now really see what the standard matrix of our linear transformation is. So we can say that therefore the standard matrix of T or the standard matrix of our linear transformation, T, is defined as matrix A with the column vectors 1, 2, 3, 1, 1, 1, negative 1, 4, 9, 1, 1, 0. And so this is the solution to part A. This is the standard matrix of our linear transformation, T. And we can now use this to help us with part B. So in part B, we are asked to find a vector x in R4 such that the image of vector x under the action of t equals the vector 1 to negative 1, assuming it exists. Now, let's keep in mind that we are given a linear transformation t from R4 to R3 such that the image of vector x under the action of t is defined by the product of matrix A with vector x. And we just found that this is our matrix A, that standard matrix of our linear transformation, T. So another way to think about how are we going to find this X is to say that we want to find vector X in R4 such that we have the non-homogeneous equation 1, 2, 3, 1, 1, 1, negative 1, 4, 9, 1, 1, 0 
multiplied by this vector x in R4, x sub 1, x sub 2, x sub 3, x sub 4, is equal to this vector 1, 2, negative 1. So there's our non-homogeneous equation. So how are we going to find this x? Well, we can convert this non-homogeneous equation to the equivalent augmented matrix. 1, 2, 3, 1, 1, 1, negative 1, 4, 9, 1, 1, 0. And we are augmenting this with that vector 1, 2, negative 1. So in order to find this vector x, we simply need to row reduce this augmented matrix to row reduced echelon form. So here we go. Starting with our first pivot position, we want to use this to eliminate the entries below it. So two steps here. We'll do negative two times the first row plus that second row to attain the new and reduced second row. And then we'll also do minus three times the first row plus the third row to attain the new and reduced third row. So here we go. This leaves us with the equivalent matrix. Now our first row is still one, one, negative one, one, one. And we have, let's see, negative two plus two is zero. We have negative two plus one is minus one. We have positive two plus four is six. And negative two plus one is negative one. Last but not least, we have negative two plus two is zero. Now, moving to our third row, we have minus three plus three is zero. We have minus three plus one is minus two. We have positive three plus nine is 12. We have minus three plus zero is minus three. And last but not least, we have negative three minus one is negative four. Beautiful. So first column's all set and we move to the second pivot position. And now we use this pivot to eliminate the entry above and below it. So two steps here. We have the second row plus the first row to attain the new and reduced first row. We'll do negative two times the second row plus the third row to attain the new and reduced third row. And let's throw a third step in here too. We'll scale the second row by a factor of negative one. So this is going to leave us with the equivalent or the row equivalent matrix. So we have zero plus one is one. We have negative one plus one is zero. We have six minus one is five. Negative one plus one is zero. And zero plus one is one. So scaling that second row by a factor of negative one, we are left with zero, one, minus six, one, zero. And now we have zero plus zero is zero. We have positive two minus two is zero. We have negative 12 plus 12 is zero. We have positive two minus three is negative one. And then zero minus four is minus four. So now our first and second columns are all set. Notice that the third column does not have a basic variable. So this means that x sub three is going to be free. So we can see though that we do have a third pivot position in the fourth column. So we use this pivot to eliminate the entry above it. So that will simply be, we'll do the third row plus the second row to attain the new and reduced second row. And then let's also scale that third row by a factor of negative one. So giving ourselves plenty of room. This leaves us with the equivalent, row equivalent matrix. Our first row is still one, zero, five, zero, one. The second row is going to be, we have zero plus zero is zero, zero plus one is one, zero minus six is minus six, and then negative one plus one is zero, 
And last but not least, we have negative 4 plus 0 is minus 4. And now scaling that, four, or that third row by negative 1, we have 0, 0, 0, 1, 4. And we have officially attained row reduced echelon form. And this is letting us know, looking across the first row, that x sub 1 is equal to 1 minus 5 times x sub 3. We can see that x sub 2 is equal to negative 4 plus 6 times x sub 3. We've already made a note that x sub 3 is free. That's our free variable. And we can see here that x sub 4 is equal to 4. Beautiful. Now, we don't want to leave our answer like this. We need to go through and rewrite vector x in its parametric vector form. So let's break this down. We have vector x. And again, we know vector x is in R4. So it has four entries, x sub 1, x sub 2, x sub 3, and x sub 4. Now, our row reduced echelon form has let us know that x sub 1 is equal to 1 minus 5 times x sub 3. That x sub 2 is equal to negative 4 plus 6 times x sub 3. x sub 3 is free. And x sub 4 is 4. And so decomposing this, we have our constant vector. 1, negative 4, 0, 4. Plus our scalar, x sub 3, multiplied by the constant vector, negative 5, 6, 1, 0. And this, of course, is such that x sub 3 is free. So this is our solution. This is vector x whose image under the action of this linear transformation t is the vector negative or 1, 2, negative 1. So there are infinitely many possible x's that satisfy this. There are infinitely many vector x's such that the image of this vector under the action of t is equal to the vector 1, 2, negative 1.